from. Oh my. Because I want I want to have people of color be prioritized in this space in a way that we usually aren't. Is that okay? Yeah. Is that okay? Don't don't be mad. Don't be mad, white people. I love you. I love you. But I just want people of color to be up here up front because I have something important to say. Don't be mad. Don't be mad. It's all love, okay? So this this we know a lot of us are here for the Black Life Matters conference and we know that every 28 hours a black person is murdered by police or vigilantes, right? We know that. Um, and it's important to know that a black person, not just black men, right? Not just black men, right. not just cisgender men are susceptible to this kinds of violence. Yeah. Um, a lot of people are are affected by this. Um, this first piece I'm gonna start with is really dedicated to a lot of queer people of color who have uh, been taken away from us uh, too soon. Instead of a moment of silence, I want to raise my voice for all my people who've been slain by unnecessary violence. Yes, they've been doomed to everlasting lifelessness. Motionless, so forgotten unless we remember Sakia Gunn and Ronnie Paris. Little girls and little boys cut down before they reach their prime. Homophobia, sexism, racism, transphobia. You, me, us, non-conforming, faggot, bitch, nigger, babies. They say she got a swag that came from her dad. They say he sway his hips like a phenomenal woman, phenomenally. That is he and I am he. Don't take offense to my stud ality. You take my swag as a dagger jammed into your hood. Woman, mother, sister, brother, father, manhood. Swagger as a dagger, bull full of it. Surely it must be. You are afraid of me and all like me because we pose a threat to an ideal masculinist, white man on top type of society. A challenge to the system. If there ever was a script, see, we took those lines and flipped them. And I just want to be free. Free. Beauty. Gang rape. Then blast. How about Michael Sandy running from his attacker on a highway, already be bruised and beaten, then crash? A car took him out. How about. Rashawn Brazel, body chopped into bits before being stuffed into trash bags. To his attacker, he was just a disposable fag. And yeah, it makes me mad because there are no disposable people. And there's no excuse for this type of evil. Stein Fenrich, decapitated, body burned by acid. The words gay nigga number one etched into his skull. Just like these stories have been etched into my heart. Just like the stories of Simi Williams, Yukia Davis, Stephanie Thomas, Elon Nettles, and so many more. Please name those names for me right now. Who are Mandy Hall. Candy Hall. Shelly Hilliard. Tiffany Edwards, Samaya Jackson, Tiffany Edwards, Samaya Dove. And the list goes on, and the list will go on if we do not speak up. So, instead of a moment of silence, I want to raise my voice for all my people who've been slain by unnecessary violence. Yes, they've been doomed to everlasting lifelessness. Motionless, so forgotten unless we remember you, me, us, non-conforming, faggot, bitch, nigger, babies. So, I want to let you know that I'm going to be coming to you with some heavy, heavy pieces this evening. Um, this, take this as a trigger warning, okay? Um, I will be using curse words. I will be talking about sexual violence. I will be talking about some things that may make you uncomfortable. Bring it. Take it. Reach. Thank you for being patient. <coughs> So this is just a short little thought. Who will get it right? Who will let it be known? He wasn't a confused sissy because his uncle Charlie touched him at night. Yeah, that happened. And it makes him cringe to think of it now. But he don't walk like that because of uncle Charlie's forced imposition. He walks like that because that's just how he rolled. Stilettos. 
and a little glitter for the girls. The glitter he always dreamed of then, now he holds it bold. And you tell him to be easy. Don't be so much, you too much. But he fought to be this pretty. He survived just so he could be this queen. And you throw shade. Talking about that boy, but you're using the wrong name. Formerly known as, but now he goes by flame. And th this, this next piece is for, it's a love poem that I wrote for a good friend of mine named Mark Anthony and he taught me a lot about love between brothers. So, this is called Loving Black. My brother calls me black with tenderness. He calls me back to myself. He teaches me black anew like only too few ever do. And I wish I knew how it would feel to be free. I wish black always referred to the love my brother gave to me. Warm and strong, he holds me tight. He calls me black. What up, black? And I'm reminded of black like the darkness you want to play in or black like the sun blazing over the ocean that you just want to stay in. My black is safe with him, but our black love isn't safe on this land. And I long to hold his hand because between our bodies, we have the power to create black magic. Black magic is black life in the face of so many losses. Black magic is black love ushering fathers home even after they did us wrong. Yeah. Black magic is black scars that never received the healing they required, yet we stand here resilient. With all these scars on our backs, in our minds, and in our souls, black. Many of us grow so brave, but meet the grave before we have the chance to grow old and pass down stories once told. But black magic, black magic, and I'm reminded of my brother who calls me black. Like the ancestors who will one day call me back home. We hold with us the dream of, the dreams that they had of freedom, and try to build bridges to that place. Black magic. Black magic is the ability to dream behind bars. Black magic is the closeness between us black people when we recognize ourselves loving one another. Yeah. So here's my verse to you. I love you too, black. You're my brother. Uh, it's called Daddy's Blues, and it's about a it's about my father and a relation our relationship, which maybe you'll get it. Hopefully you will. I'm not gonna go into too much detail, but I love my daddy. This is called Daddy's Blues. He played a lonely baritone tone, a night and day daddy. He lived for the high to the moon in the afternoon. I watched, I listened, I learned. I dreamed that his song was grand and could save me. Maybe not, but I'd learn to play something still. Only one scale I know, but I play it like it's the only scale that's ever been written. Blues. Twelve bars, that's all I need. Twelve bars, that's what he played and handed down to me. There's no way I could reject it, because he had sold everything else for the riff of a lifetime that never lasted. And it never replayed itself quite like the first time it played, addicted to the feeling he addicted to the feeling of the sound he paid his blues. And what was left was his gift to the world. These strings, my hands, his guitar, the only thing he never sold. His blues. Mine to play now. I couldn't refuse it, because in his voice I heard a cry, a plea. Without saying it, his blues was his apology to me. And though most people would like to inherit the world, I was satisfied with strings that cried. He walked away and I knew he wouldn't be back. He had to catch the train. I wanted to stop him, but I never could. Some highs are just so good, they can't be understood, but I always did understand. I was looking for it too. I started to play that song on that guitar, but silence, it was broken. And in that quiet, there was no blue notes more true. This blue, he taught it to me in dark basement afternoons between gin and juice. 
Somewhere between the sweet and the bitter Clamoring shouts and deafening silences Yeah, somewhere between stars and dust We always knew the blues And it ain't that bad mm.